Good afternoon. Has everybody been blessed? How many people went down uh, to the creek and saw the baptisms? Well, wasn't that a blessing? Amen. Uh, there's going to be another one a little bit after five. Um, just one that I know of. So uh, it's been a really quite a high Sabbath. And um, I, I have uh, two wonderful people I want to introduce you all to. And I'm going to have a word of prayer, and then I'll go ahead and let you know who they are. Let's pray. Uh, Father in heaven, we lift your name up on high. And right now, as we get ready for this concert and, and we are ministered to by music, I pray for your Holy Spirit to be poured out. And Father, I pray that it will touch the hearts of every person here, every person watching online. And Father, I just pray now uh, that you will just draw us closer to Jesus. You said that if Jesus be lifted up, lifted up on the cross, that he would draw all people to him. So Father, my prayer right now is that you will draw each of us closer to him, that we will recommit our lives to him every moment of every day. And we'll be sure to give you all the praise and the honor and glory. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Amen. All right, so I want to go ahead and, and bring up um, our new friends. You, you saw them play last night. Um, and they're going to be playing uh, a special music for us tonight. But now we're going to get a whole concert. Uh, I want to go ahead and bring up a better covenant. Let's give them, let's give God a round of, of praise. Amen. Testing. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. everyone. Have we woken up from our afternoon nap yet? Happy Sabbath. My name is Darby Schultz and this is my husband Andrew and we are the full-time music ministry A Better Covenant based in Spartanburg, South Carolina and we are, so, yes, we have some representatives here. <laughs> we are so grateful and honored to be worshiping with you on this beautiful Sabbath afternoon. Uh, like, like Pastor Bird mentioned this morning, yes, it's hot, but I will still take this over what it feels like in South Carolina right now. Woo hee! <laughs> and we have loved your theme for the week, Rise Up and Build. We've been very inspired by it. But in order to build anything, what do you need to have? You need to have, you need to have a foundation. You need to have a base. And I'm sure you guys have probably talked about this at length already, but what 
as Christians, what is our foundation? What is our base? And I believe the answer is the Word of God. Everything we do should be founded in the Word of God, which is why we opened with Standing on the Promises. And so we're going to do for you today what we have done for the last five years of ministry, which is talk about just a couple of God's timeless promises that have touched our lives in the last few years. Now, the first promise we'd like to talk about is the one that we're all experiencing right now, and that's the promise of the Sabbath. Amen? The, the Sabbath is a beautiful promise where we remember not only what God did for us at creation, but also what he accomplished for us at the cross. Amen? But first, I need to tell you a little bit about Andrew and I. Andrew and I met almost... Eight years ago now, we've been married for five. We just celebrated our five-year wedding anniversary a couple weeks ago. But before, before I even met Andrew, I decided to make the scary and strange to some people decision, but I felt that God was calling me to leave my Adventist bubble and go to a public music school. And I enjoyed my time there, and I don't regret it one bit because I believe that's what God called me to do. He opened doors for that to happen. But about halfway through my time there, my advisor sat me down one day. I was a double major at the time, but my advisor sat me down one day, and he said, you're doing great, but unless you start coming to our Friday night rehearsals, I'm going to have to pull one of your majors. We thought we had worked this out ahead of time, but in this particular instance, he put his foot down and he said, if you're not here Friday night, I'm pulling one of your majors. And so I thought about that, and I prayed about that, and I cried about it a little bit too. It was the first time in my 17 short years of life I had what you might call a faith crisis. And it was the first time I had really had to ask myself, do I keep the Sabbath because I believe it's true, or because my parents have told me to for 18 years. And no one else could make that decision for me. That was a journey that God and I had to go alone. But ultimately, I did decide that I believed the Sabbath was biblical, and so I let them pull one of my majors. But the other very important reason I chose this school was because at the time, it was an all-girls school. But my senior year, I learned that they did, in fact, accept male graduate students, and in walked Andrew. Enter temptation. We normally had a couple, usually married, male graduate students on campus, but that year, he just happened to be the only one on our campus of over 700 women. And of course, we immediately accepted him into our friend group because to be honest, he looked a little scared to be there. But we could tell right away, I could tell right away that he was kind, he was loving, he was intelligent, he was clearly very talented, he wasn't bad on the eyes. What else did you want me to say about you? <laughs> he, he is all those things and more, but I knew that after I had just fought so hard for my Sabbath that I needed to be honest with him. I did have an Adventist roommate at this point, but we were still the only two on campus. And so I told my roommate to get the ice cream ready. This was probably not going to go past tonight. And I sat Andrew down, and I outlined my Sabbath beliefs for him. And you know what he said? He said, okay, that's fine, which was not the reaction I was expecting at all. And so I'm going to let Andrew introduce himself to you for a couple minutes. You met him last night, but now I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about his background and his testimony. But ultimately, what does the promise of the Sabbath mean to him? Hello, and happy Sabbath. So you've already seen me once before, and I apologize you have to see me again. But you didn't know I could play piano as well. <laughs> but you know, God is good, and there is a couple of people in my life that truly rose up and built me from who, who I am right now, a child of God. And because of Darby's influence, and she told me that she fought for her Sabbaths, she stood up for what she believed in. She rose, and she actually built me up in the process because that was inspiring to watch. And, I, and yeah, thank you for wonderful God-fearing spouses that you know, keep you in line. 
am so thankful for her. But she mentioned the whole Adventist thing because I never grew up Adventist. I've never even heard of a Seventh-day Adventist in my life and until I met her. I grew up Lutheran, though. And I grew up in a Lutheran church. I did my confirmation classes. I did my Sunday school. I did everything a good Sunday person would do. I also love to talk. I am a curious kid by nature. I have to know how the world works. I like asking questions because I like thinking deep. And that plays a role later on. Because when I was a kid in our church, our pastor gave a sermon. And he would often give a sermon about the book, some book. And he would read all the verses and give a sermon on it. And I loved it. But I'm a curious kid, and he did something different one Sunday. So, people can interpret questions two different ways, right? Either one, if you're an educator, you would actually know this, because I used to be a band director and a choir director for a couple of years. You have something called guided questions, right? And those guided questions are, I'm a teacher, I'm asking questions in a way that have you, and I'm trying to move someone from point A to point B. Does that make sense? Or... And that's the influence. Or you're just trying to get information. This person opted for, he thought we had an agenda. He thought we were forcing him to be moving from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And after that, he brought us into his office and told us we weren't welcome back in church. Not in my church, he said. You can't do that. You can't question me like that. But, you know, kids are very influential, right? They're very easily influenced. Either if you see a pastor kicking somebody out of the church, what does my image of the church become? What does my image of God become? Not so good. And would you want to serve a God like that? And I hope the answer is no, because God is not in the kicking people out business. He's in the saving business. He wants you for who you are. And he was still working on my heart, so much so that I read my scripture cover to cover six times. A number that I'm not making up because I was so desperate for truth. But sometimes we will look to other shepherd before we look to the good shepherd. Don't we? And I wanted to know, I just wanted to know this God so badly. I had the head knowledge, but I didn't have the relationship yet. Fast forward to when I met Darby. And she told me about her Sabbath beliefs, but then she did something amazing. Another instance of her rising up to the occasion. She invited me to church. You know, silent witnessing and showing loving actions can transform lives completely. And by the way, when she invited me to church and she told me that it was on a Saturday and I was over it because that was college football season, so I guess I could go. I didn't, I didn't know any better, but I went to church. And you know, door greeters are a fantastic ministry. I don't think they get the thanks they deserve because they're the first point in contact in the church. If a person, if a door greeter is mistreating someone or acknowledge or neglecting them, the person walking into the church, they have already written the script for you. They've already heard the sermon before listening to the sermon. You have to be careful how you act because you might be the only Bible people will ever read. And that is a humbling thing, in my opinion. And this door greeter rose up to the occasion in the form of silent witnessing, in the form that she, she wanted to serve me. She wanted to love me. She gave me a giant hug, which I had no idea Spartanburg SCA Church was a huggy church. But, you know, I felt so loved. I felt so welcomed. I felt so encouraged that I, almost, I was almost convicted and wanted to get baptized right then and there. Just because of that love that door greeter had. I didn't even hear the sermon yet. These Adventists haven't figured out. I'm, I'm missing something. And I want to go to Bible study. And he told me that God is love. And that we worship on the Sabbath because we want to acknowledge God's beautiful creation. I mean, look around you. Look at the mountains out there. You can't tell me God is not good when you see those mountains. Right? That is beautiful that he made just for you. We can enjoy it because he loves you that much. But not only is the creative work finished, but the redemptive work is finished too. You don't have to worry about saving yourself anymore. You don't have to work so hard. And amen for that. God commands us to rest one day a week. And again, me being a band director and a choir director, I wrote lesson plans seven days a week. I didn't know how to rest. And yet God commanded me to rest for one day. And you know that one day, I was the most productive in the next week. Explain that to me. I bet you can in one word, God. And God alone. Because of him, 
that whole work week was the most productive I have ever been. And I had time to spare. That is, if that isn't miraculous, I don't know what is. That is the power of God. And a reminder to me and to us that God will take care of you in the small things, like working out lesson plans, to the big things. Because that's just the God we serve. And that's what honoring the Sabbath one time did. That's all it took. And I kept on honoring the Sabbath, and it's been five years, right? Six years, I became rebaptized. I became rebaptized in the Seventh day Adventist church. And other than marrying Darby, that is the best decision I've ever made. So we heard this song for the first time while he was still going through Bible studies and knowing how much the Sabbath played a part in his rebaptism. We knew we had to contact the composer, Mark Bond, and he very graciously allowed us to record his song. We hope you love it as much as we do. This is Temple Made of Time. God took six days and created earth and moon, the stars and sun. On the seventh day he rested from the work that he had done. Then he blessed, made it holy as a gift for every man to remind us where we came from and just how this world began. And so we got married and hit the road with our brand new music ministry, having exactly zero expectations. As he mentioned, he used to be a middle school band director and choir director, and then we would do our music ministry on the weekends, and we had a great time. And again, we had zero expectations for that first year of ministry. But the best way and the shortest way that I can sum up the past five years of ministry together is simply that God's been faithful. He has been faithful, and he will continue to be faithful to his people. Amen? He was faithful in 2019, 
during our first year of ministry when we didn't think we would be doing much of anything. But instead, we were busy every single weekend until the pandemic hit. But, he, but guess what? He was also faithful in 2020 during the pandemic, a time when we thought we may never perform again, a time when Andrew lost his teaching job and we lost all source of reliable income. And we had no idea what to do, but we couldn't ignore that nagging feeling of the Holy Spirit saying, you know that music ministry you just started? Yeah, you should make it full time now. We thought that was crazy and other people did too. But finally, we couldn't ignore the Holy Spirit any longer, and so we did. We stepped out in faith, and we made our music ministry full-time. But it wasn't until 2021 that that meant doing things every weekend again. But even then, he was still faithful and provided for us in many miraculous ways that I do not have time to tell you about. I wish I did. But he was also faithful last year. And he, he was especially faithful this one particular weekend about a year and a half ago when we were spending a weekend in Ohio, a weekend where we were at a church service, Sabbath morning, and then we were gonna go to another church nearby for an evening Vespers concert. But a couple days before we were to leave for Ohio, the secretary for the evening church emailed me and said, I don't know guys, a lot of people have told me that they're sick or they're out of town, I think we should just scrap this whole thing and reschedule for a time when more people are gonna be there. And that was a bummer, we, we never wanna hear that. But by then we had learned that God would provide and we knew we had another opportunity, so we went to Ohio anyway. And God did indeed provide and bless during that morning church service. And after that church service, we went back to our hotel and took a lovely Sabbath afternoon nap. And when I woke up from that Sabbath afternoon nap, I realized that my heart rate was really high and my chest is starting to hurt. And that's when I looked at Andrew and said, I think it's time to go to the hospital. And I do not think it is a coincidence that Kettering, one of the best hospitals in the country, was just 20 minutes from our hotel. So we should, so we'd go to Kettering on a Saturday night instead of hitting the town. <laughs> And they run, they run some tests and very quickly are rushing me off to emergency surgery because unbeknownst to me, what had happened was an enormous blood clot had started in my left ankle, consumed my entire leg, went through my gut and was now blocking both sides of my lungs. So they rushed me off to surgery, quite literally saved my life. I had a heart attack somewhere in there too. I don't remember any of this. But what I do remember is Andrew being faithfully by my side, not sleeping for at least two days. And as Andrew mentioned, he likes to talk. And so very quickly, the staff of Kettering are realizing that we're not from around here <laughs> and why these strange South Carolinians are in town. And so after the first surgery, the surgeon comes and shakes Andrew's hand and says, she's gonna be okay, she's resting now, she has medicine. Oh, thank you, doctor, thank you so much. He leaves, and then one of his residents, whom Andrew had been talking to throughout the night, comes up to him and said, now didn't you tell me that you were supposed to have another concert tonight? And he said, yeah, but it just got canceled the other day. And she said, well, then your wife is very lucky because she's young, and I'm gonna add stubborn. And if she had tried to push her way through a second concert, she could have so easily dislodged one of the clots in her lungs and dropped down dead. But you and I both know that's not luck, is it? That's God. And so I tell this story for a couple reasons. First of all, because miracle stories like that, I believe deserve to be told. Not, not because of anything we did, but because of the miraculous nature of God and all honor and glory goes to him. And I'm just so grateful that he decided that he was not done with me or our music ministry. And we praise him every day that we are still here walking, breathing, and singing. And let me, as, as someone who almost died recently, let me just be the first to tell you if you haven't heard today, every day is truly a gift. A gift that sometimes we take for granted, but there are little miracles happening all around us every day. 
And if we slow down and look for them, God is so good and he loves us so much. And so this next song we actually wrote during the pandemic, but so in it you'll hear some of our hopes and fears from the pandemic, but it drives home the most important point of the, the message of the song essentially is, God's promises are not just timeless because he is timeless. They're timeless because they are not dependent on any circumstances that happen here on this earth. Amen? The pandemic may have changed the way we do some things forever. However, it has not changed one word, not even a punctuation mark of what God has already promised us in his word. Amen? And no matter what happens down here on this crazy earth, Jesus Christ is still on his throne. This song is called May This Storm. Before we do our next couple songs, I want to give you just a little bit of historical context. Um, we have a bunch of hymnals lying around our house, as, as church musicians typically do, and we have one from Andrew's Old Lutheran Church. And in this hymnal, we found the original score of A Mighty Fortress is Our God. 
written by Martin Luther in the original German. It's a really cool score. If you ever just want to Google it, it's really cool looking. Um, but when you're in music school, they teach you how to read these things. And of course, music from the 1500s sounds a little different than it does today. And so what we're gonna do for you today is we're going to start with the original 1529 version. And you may notice it sounds a little different. It'll be a little hard to tap your foot to. Andrew's gonna do it once by himself just to get you used to it. And then I'm gonna join him. But then we're gonna end with the version that came over 300 years later that is still in our hymnals today. So we hope you are blessed.
So in the months leading up to our wedding, we're going through our premarital counseling. And during one of and during one of our first sessions together, the pastor asked us both, do you know you're saved? And without missing a beat, Andrew went, yes! I've been convicted of the truth, and I've been rebaptized, and I know I'm saved. Amen! <laughs> but I was not so convinced. I did not have that assurance. And it took some more time and reflection and study and it actually ended up being a little sad because I realized that I had gotten stuck in a rut. A rut that I think is dangerous and common for all Christians, regardless of denomination, to fall into. Tell me if you know anybody like this. I had turned myself into the checklist Christian. I made a list. Now, grant you, I'm like a teenager, 1920 at the time. And I had made a list in my head of what the perfect Adventist young adult was supposed to do and look like. And I thought it had things on it like I was supposed to pray every morning and every evening and before all of my meals. And I was supposed to be completely caught up on the Sabbath school lesson and some other sort of Bible study every day. And I honestly thought that if Jesus were to return on a day that I hadn't finished this list that I made up in my own head, oh well, game over. But that's not how it works, right? Praise the Lord for that. There, there is a word for that, for what I had been feeling. It's called legalism. <laughs> it's when you do things to get the love of God, right? To earn favor with God. But let me, let me tell you, there is nothing we can do on this earth to make God love us more than he already does. He already loved us so much that he died for us. There's not a much better or bigger love than that. And let me tell you two more amazing things about the promise of his grace. Number one, it is immediate. That means the second you asked for it and claimed it, it was yours. He's not going to wait for you to turn perfect before he gives it to you because that wouldn't happen, right? And number two, this free gift has been 100% paid for by the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? The good Lord did not come down to this earth to pay the ultimate sacrifice and then expect us to pitch in the last dollar. Praise the Lord for that. And so if you remember nothing else about what we do or say or sing all, all weekend. I hope that you will claim this, this, this promise from Scripture that where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Cause my God is big. 
But unfortunately, I know that I'm not the only Christian who's ever felt like that, who felt like they had to do all they could in order to earn their, their favor with God. And if I felt like that, and I've grown up in this church my entire life, I can't imagine what some people out there might feel like. I know I have some friends, some family members, you, some colleagues, I know you, you may as well, who feel like they have to get their act together out there first before they're worthy to come back through the church doors. I hate to break it to y'all, but just because we're sitting here on this glorious Sabbath day on this beautiful campus, doesn't mean we're any less of broken sinners than they are. But praise the Lord, God gave us a way to combat all the misconceptions and lies that the devil spreads about our beautiful Savior. One of the ways that is my personal favorite is through spheres of influence. Everyone in this room has a different sphere of influence, and God purposefully created it that way. Even mine is different from Andrew's. And so the practical application of this concert is that if you know someone within your sphere of influence that doesn't know about the amazing grace or the love of God or that we serve a God who keeps his promises, I just want to encourage you to pray for the Holy Spirit and then reach out to that person. Tell them how much God loves them. Show them through your actions. Because I know you, like me, believe that time is getting very short. I don't believe we're going to be on this earth for much longer. And like one of my favorite pastors likes to say, this is not the time to sit on the porch and drink sweet tea waiting for Jesus to come. This is, this is the time to get active. So let's go make heaven crowded, shall we?
Before we do our last couple songs and wrap up our time together, I just want to make a couple of quick announcements. First of all, we want to thank all of you so much for coming out and spending your Sabbath afternoon with us. We're so grateful to be here at this camp meeting period. Um, but, but first of all, we would like to ask for your prayers. This is our third and last camp meeting of the camp meeting season, but we are also booked completely solid every weekend for the next three months at least. And so we would please ask that you keep our music ministry in your prayers for safe travels, but also for those that would hear these gospel promises and hear about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that they may be encouraged and inspired to make Jesus Christ their best friend and Savior as well. Amen? If you have liked what you've heard today and would like to keep listening to it, um, after Sabbath hours, after the last meeting is over tonight, Andrew and I will be uh, in the ABC with all three of our CDs available for sale, and we would love to meet you and love to talk to you uh, so we can tell you more about ourselves and about our ministry. And if you would like to keep in contact with us, we'd love to keep in contact with you. Some of the best ways to stay in touch with us is to follow A Better Covenant Band on either Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. So if you have any of those things, feel free to follow us there and keep in contact with us there. And um, praise the Lord. Remember I said earlier that God wasn't quite done with this yet? Well, praise the Lord he wasn't because... Last year, 3ABN called, and we got to record a music special with Ryan Day for the Praise Him Network, and that special is now on the front page of our website, which is abettercovenantband.com. It's also archived on the 3ABN website if you would like to go back and watch that interview and hear even more of our testimony. But for now, at this time, we're going to switch things up, and I know you will continue to be blessed by Andrew and his baby tuba. So this last song means a lot to me personally because I wrote it long before I met Andrew, long before 
the call for music ministry had ever been placed on my heart. I was just a little freshman in college and I was taking a songwriting class. And the only homework for this songwriting class was that you had to show up every day with at least 30 seconds of new material. It didn't have to be a good 30 seconds. <laughs> but it had to be at least 30 seconds worth and then you had to perform it in front of the whole class. And I remember this one particular day, I had absolutely nothing. I overslept my alarm, I raced down to the music building, I threw myself in a practice room and frantically tried to come up with something inspired and it just wasn't happening. And I just started to cry because I was starting to accept the reality that I was gonna have to show up to class unprepared and that was very unlike me. But I love how Max Licato puts it in the, ch the first chapter of his book, Anxious for Nothing. If you like Max Licato, that is a good, quick Sabbath afternoon read. And in the first chapter of this book, he talks about himself and how when he was a young man, his father had died of ALS. And around the same time, he noticed that he had been born with a shaky left thumb. And so after his father's death, he went to go see a neurologist and they ran all sorts of tests on him. And they, he came back for the results a couple weeks later and the doctor sat him down and said, you don't have ALS, you're fine. And he was like, wait, really? And the doctor was like, yeah, really, you're, you're, you're fine. And he said, doc, I'm gonna need you to be really sure about this. And the doctor said, I promise. And he found that fascinating because a medical professional had never promised him anything, ever. But he took that promise and he left the office. And he says, as cheesy as it sounds, when he got to that first red light, he looked down at his left thumb and said, I'm not going to give you any more of my attention because instead of choosing to focus on the problem, I'm gonna remember the promise. And folks, that's what we have to do to survive down here. There are ve some very big and some very real problems on this earth. I'm not saying there isn't. But instead of focusing on the problems, let's remember the promises of God. And so back to me crying in my practice room, I was impressed with a particular promise, a verse that I had heard my whole life growing up. I couldn't tell you then where it was found, but now it's one of our favorites. Say it with me if you know it. Come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so with that verse on my heart and about 15 minutes to spare before class, praise the Lord, not just 30 seconds, but this whole last song happened. Am I 
You guys have been sitting long enough. Let's stand and end with a closing song. I'm sorry we don't have words for you, but I think you'll know it. Praise the Lord. We serve a God who keeps his promises. Amen? That, that is a God worth loving. That is a God worth trusting. That is a God worth serving and worshiping. So please stand and sing with us as we sing hymn number 530, It Is Well With My Soul. Perfect, thank you. When peace like a Father, thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day here at Valley Vista. I thank you so much for bringing us together. Thank you for bringing us through another week. Thank you so much for everybody who has come to bring honor and praise and glory to your name this Sabbath afternoon. I ask a double Sabbath day's blessing upon each family represented in this room and upon each family who may be watching online. Thank you, Lord, for your many promises. Thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for the peace and the rest that only you can provide. And most of all, Lord, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you that he lived a perfect life on this earth in our stead, paid our ultimate sacrifice, rose again, and is currently mediating on our behalf as our better covenant. Please be with us now, Lord, as we go our separate ways, be it tonight or tomorrow. I ask for safe travel for everyone here. May we all come to worship you again, if not on this earth, then on that eternal shore. And all God's people said, amen. <laughs>